For today's video we're taking a look at a Mercedes Euclid Model 21 electromechanical calculator made in Germany somewhere around 1940. This machine was made by Mercedes Bureau Machine and Work, apologies for the pronunciation there, rather than the Mercedes car manufacturer that we're more familiar with. In the 1960s, the Mercedes Euclid machines were rebranded as Celatron machines and carried on being manufactured until electronic calculators took over. The Model 21 is a relatively advanced machine for the time, with electric power and automatic division, although it doesn't have the automatic multiplication that some of the more advanced models had. As is the case with most of these machines, the Mercedes came to me completely seized and with some damaged and missing parts, so there was a fair bit of work to do to get it running again. I might look at the internals of the machine in a future video, but for now I'll just demonstrate how it works. Addition is much like any other adding machine. You enter the number onto the keyboard, we'll go for 9436, and press the plus button to add that into the register. The keyboard is automatically cleared after the addition, ready to enter another number. So we'll go for 2909, and again press the plus button to add it into the register. And we're left with the total of 12345 displayed in the register. The counter above is showing 2 because we've performed 2 additions. So now I can clear the counter with this button marked with a 1 and clear the register with this button marked with 2. The third button has lost some of its white plastic lettering, so it looks like another number 1, but it's actually number 3. This one clears the keyboard manually, like this. Subtraction is pretty similar, although like a comptometer this machine can only add numbers. So if I enter a number 7 and press the plus button to add it into the register, and then I want to subtract 2, I enter 2 on the keyboard and press the minus button, leaving us with the answer of 5. But what the machine has actually done is add 8 to that column, and then 9s to all the other columns to clear the carried number 1. To demonstrate this, I'll clear the register and enter my 7 again. This time I'll use these twiddly knobs on the top to enter the number into the register. And then I'll enter 8 onto the keyboard and press the plus button. You can see that we're now left with 15. But if I now enter 9s in all the other columns to the left and press the plus button again, it clears the carried 1 over to the left of the register. When the machine does this automatically, the carried one is cleared right the way off the register, but I've run out of columns on the keyboard, so that's as far as I can do it manually. The Mercedes also has another neat trick if the result of the subtraction leaves a minus figure. For example, if I enter 499 into the register, and then subtract 563, I'm left with a fairly meaningless figure in the register. But if I slide this lever on the register over to the right, it will display the correct negative answer of minus 64. However, there are limitations to this system. If I enter my 499 again, and then subtract 569, and again slide the lever over to the right, the answer is displayed as minus 60, but with a red zero. This warns you that you have to take away another 10 in your head to give the correct result of minus 70. If I subtract another 1, the answer will be correct, showing 71, or minus 71. It's only when the minus answer ends in a 0 that this limitation shows up. For multiplication, it's very much like a hand-cranked mechanical calculator, where you simply crank the handle the amount of times you want to multiply the number on the keyboard. Only in this case, you hold down the plus button rather than cranking the handle. So, if I want to multiply 8 by 7, I'll enter 8 onto the keyboard, and then move this lever from the A, or Add position, into the M, or Multiply position. This just stops the machine from clearing the keyboard after the first addition. And now I simply hold down the plus button for 7 revolutions. And we get the answer of 56 showing in the register. You can also see that we've multiplied 8, which is still showing on the keyboard, by 7, which is showing in the counter. It's when doing multiplication that the third keyboard clearing button is particularly useful. 
and you can actually press all three clearing buttons at the same time for speed. So what about if I want to multiply by something bigger than a single digit number? For instance, if I want to multiply 512 by 256. I'll start off by entering the 512 on the keyboard, and then in the units position I'll press the plus button for six revolutions. And then I'll use the carriage shifting buttons over here to shift the carriage one place to the right. And then in the tens position I'll press the plus button for five revolutions. And then I'll move the carriage one more place to the right, and so now I'm working in the hundreds position, and I'll press the plus button for two revolutions. And I overshot by one, so I'll correct that by pressing the minus button. And as before, you can see that I've multiplied 512, which is showing on the keyboard, by 256, which is showing in the counter, giving us a result of 131,072, which is shown in the register. And once I've finished, I can simply clear the counter, register and keyboard by pressing the three clearing buttons, and then shift the carriage back to the left using the left arrow key. Division is where this machine really comes into its own. If I want to divide 355 by 113, which should give us an approximation of pi, I can do it the slow way by entering the 355 on the register, and then entering the 113 on the keyboard a couple of columns from the left. And then press the divide button, the machine will shift the carriage all the way to the right and subtract the 113 until the register underflows. It'll then shift the carriage one place to the left and add the 113 until it clears the underflow. And then it'll shift the carriage another place to the left and subtract the 113 until it underflows again, and so on until it gets to the end, like this. leaving us with an answer of 3.14159. You'll have to manually move the marker to indicate where the decimal point is. So if I clear all that, and then we can take a look at the quicker method. If I enter the 355 on the left of the keyboard, and the 113 on the right, starting on the fourth column, and move this lever on the front to the D for division position, now I simply press the plus key, followed by the minus key, followed by the divide key, and the machine does the rest. And again we're left with the answer of 3.14159 displayed in the counter. To show what's actually happening when we do this, the divide lever stops the end four columns from clearing. If I enter all ones across the keyboard and press the clear button, you can see that the end four remain down, until I move the lever back to the end position and clear the keyboard manually. So when I enter both the dividend of 355 and the divisor of 113 at the same time, the plus button adds them both into the register and counts one on the counter. The keys on the left pop up, so when I press the minus button the 113 is cleared from the register and the counter resets to zero, but the 355 remains, ready for the division to commence with a single press of the division button, like so. Using the normal div button for division adds the result into the counter, but if I want to subtract another result from that, I can use the minus div button. So if I want to work out 333 divided by 222, minus 555 divided by 666, I can enter the 333 and 222 as usual, press the plus and minus buttons, followed by the div button. and the result of 1.5 is displayed in the counter. Next I'll clear the register, which isn't strictly necessary in this case because it worked out exactly, but it's good practice. 
and then enter the 555 and 666 and again press the plus and minus buttons followed by the minus div button. leaving us with the result of 0 0.66667 showing in the counter. There are a few other buttons we haven't looked at yet. The plus and minus on the left of the machine work more or less like the buttons on the right, but they don't clear the keyboard, regardless of the position of the add and multiply lever, so they are better suited for doing multiplication, particularly as they are positioned closer to the keyboard shifting buttons. The COR button reverses the direction of the counter. So for instance, if I'm subtracting multiple amounts from a number in the register, I can keep an item count of how many items I've subtracted. It might not have escaped your attention the rather fantastic way this machine exposes its whirling and spinning parts when it performs a division, just right for munching up a stray finger or gradually pulling the user into the machine when their tie gets caught. It would probably be frowned upon these days, but I think it's utterly brilliant. And I'm sure someone will ask the question, what happens if you divide by zero? The whole automatic division process relies on the underflowing and overflowing of the register to trigger it to move to the next column or stop completely when it gets to the end. So if you divide by zero, it will neither underflow or overflow, and would theoretically carry on forever. But you can stop it by pulling the div key towards you, which releases it from the latching mechanism, ending the cycle thusly. I think that will do for this video. I might shoot another video looking at the mechanism inside the machine at some point in the future. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.